Lately, Midjourney has become a lot more powerful with features such as panning, zooming, and in painting that we've been waiting for for a very long time. And because of that, I decided to collect my top 10 tips that utilize those features in Midjourney. So let's hold the intro and let's get started. For many of those, I'm gonna assume that you have Remix enabled. So just to make sure, I'm gonna jump into Discord and verify. We go here and type settings and make sure that Remix here is enabled. And for the first tip, let's look at permutations. Permutations allow you to give Midjourney multiple different uh, prompts, different tokens, and it will generate all the different images with the different tokens you have defined. So in this case, we create a cartoon, octopus, shark, and pearlfish swimming in the ocean surrounded by a coil. You do permutations by marking curly braces and then comma separated uh, commands inside or tokens inside. Midjourney will uh, tell you that it will generate three different images. And keep in mind that uh, the limitation is for the basic subscriptions. It's up to four jobs at once. The standard subscribers can create up to 10 and pro and mega subscribers can create 40 jobs with a single permutation prompt. Let's have it generated. So here we have the pellet fish swimming in the ocean. We have a cartoon shark swimming in the ocean, a cartoon octopus swimming in the ocean, all generated at the same time. All right, my next tip is that when you zoom out with Remix, change the environment that is being generated around your image. So let's take that octopus and put it in some interesting environment. I like that one the most, the first one. So first we upscale it and then we press custom zoom. And here we can change the prompt that will actually be uh, used. So let's put it in a frame on a wall. So a living room with a window to the ocean. And you can see how Midjourney actually took the image we already generated before and generated a room around it. Using this technique, we can basically create an image in a number of steps. So you can generate whatever is inside and then zoom out and generate the environment around it. Let's see how a little octopus is doing. And you can see here that the octopus has a whole environment and he's in the window of a small living room. And you can even see that it added all the details in the sky and the uh, mountains or like the hills around here. However, the image is square and not rectangle uh, or wide like we want it to be. And so my next tip, number three, is that you can use the zoom function in order to change the aspect ratio of an image even if you don't want to zoom out. Let's see how you do that. So we press on the uh, enlarged image, we press custom zoom and here you can change uh, the aspect ratio of the image, 16 by nine because we want it to be wide. And we keep zoom one, which means don't actually zoom out. We don't have to change the prompt. If we prompt something very similar to what we prompted before, we'll get an extension of that image. However, if we change the prompt, we can get Midjourney to generate something completely different uh, around, kind of similar to what we did with the window. And there we have a very nice zoom out with little flowers, additional windows, and our little octopus is still here in the center. Okay, for my next tip, Tip number four, if you use the same parameters frequently, you can actually define a preset in Midjourney. So let's say that I frequently use aspect ratio 16 by nine and style of a hundred. I can do slash prefer option set, give it some name. For example, I give, I name it mine. And in the value, I tap the parameters I want to set. So in this case, it's AR 16 by nine and S hundred. Now, every time I pass minus minus mine to a prompt, it will automatically replace it with these settings. So let's generate an image with that. Girl sees a happy little house in the forest covered in balloons, children's book, minus minus mine. And you can clearly see here that Midjourney replaced it with a minus minus AR 16 by nine and the stylize. So we basically got the images uh, with the style we passed. So my next tip is to use describe. Well, not really, but a specific use of describe is actually very, very beneficial. So you might have already known the command describe, which allows you to extract a prompt from an existing image. But what many people don't know is that describe actually gives you the aspect ratio of the image as well. So if you want to generate an image with the same size, you can do that with describe. The way describe works is you pass describe 
and then upload an image. So I'm gonna upload this little image, I run it, and you see that first we get all those prompts of Napoleon, or like how to generate the image, but you'll also notice that the aspect ratio is 19 by 32. And you can use it in generating your own images or basically for any use. If you have Remix enabled and you press one of the numbers, it will use that prompt to generate it and you can change the aspect ratio as well. So let's say we want um, 16 by 9, an image of Napoleon Bonaparte. Apparently this is Leonard Bonaparte. Okay, tip number six. When you have a long and complicated prompt, you can shorten it and extract which tokens are actually uh, having a major impact on the image and which do not. So let's take this prompt of Leonard Bonaparte and try to shorten it. So I shorten and passing the prompt. And Mid Journey immediately returns which uh, tokens here are the strong ones which are the weak ones and which ones don't actually change anything. So resolution, for example, doesn't actually have an impact. And now we can generate a new image, which will be quite a bit simpler in the prompt or rather will give Midjourney more freedom uh, with the images it generates. And I would argue that we actually got a better image than we got before because that looks like a painting of Leonard Bonaparte a lot more than uh, the previous image. Tip number seven, emojis are prompts too. You can use emojis instead of text or in combination with text and uh, that will generate very surprising images. What really surprised me is that the images are actually directly tied with the emojis, which is actually really, really cool. So let's let's see a few examples. Let's take just this monocle smiley. Find it quite remarkable how different the images are from each other, but are all very intricate and detailed. Actually, all of them are very interesting, very science fiction. Next, let's try to make some coffee, plain and earth. And you can clearly see that we actually get an airplane with a coffee cup, let's take, put a coffee in a jungle. And what is truly interesting is how much that image is different than just typing the word coffee instead of using the emoji. So let's have that being generated as well. You can see that in all the emoji ones, we get a pretty cool tiger next to it or a lady here drinking the coffee. But the ones without the emoji, they are quite a bit simpler so don't be afraid of using emojis they can really generate cool uh, results definitely worth a few experimentations with that okay tip number eight i bet you didn't know you can actually generate text in mid journey especially considering that uh, generative ai today is known for not generating text properly it still cannot but it's definitely getting there so the best trick to generate uh, text in mid journey is to generate the text in some text editor and use that as an image. So I prepared an image here of HTML and I'll use that as my image prompt. If you haven't already, don't forget to watch my full length Mid Journey tutorial linked here, uh, where I show in detail how to use image prompts, how to upload them, and well, I'm not gonna repeat all of that here, so go check it out there. Now, after the image has been uploaded, let's copy the link. Again, the same way I showed in the previous video and prompt me joining the following way. We give the URL of the image, wooden sign on top of a saloon, close up, wild west style, Pixar style. Now, if we're really lucky, in some cases, me joining just generates the text properly in the first time. However, we can really roll it a few times, then it might work, or we can use in painting to replace some of the letters with the letters we actually want. We have a few cute ones here. I think that one, number three is the close to what I'm looking for, but the text is very far from what I want. So what I do is I select Valley region, like I showed in the in painting video, and let's replace that with wooden sign saying HML. Now add C 100. In order to set chaos to 100, what chaos actually does is uh, it controls how different each result in the grid is from each other. So chaos 100 means that each image in the grid is gonna be substantially different from the other ones. Okay, I actually re-rolled the text because in the previous one there was nothing to kind of start with. And here I got a very close result to what I'm looking for. So this one and this one are pretty close. So let's take that one 
number two and uh, I'll add on number one even because that one is really nice and what you're looking for is to have enough space between the letters so and never replace all the letters at once so let's say this is gonna be wooden sign saying HTML. you want to keep at least one letter and look at that both number one and number two are exactly what we were looking for so let's enlarge number one and now we want to see the entrance to this uh, salon so let's pen and we just type entrance to a salon start seeing i think that i will like number two and number three number three actually starts to look really nice with all the little uh, bells and those doors yeah number three is gonna be what what we like all right look at this a large sign with a door on the bottom so let's enlarge number three zoom out like i showed before wild west down and now we're also gonna set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 because we want the image to be wide we type here aspect ratio 16 by 9 zoom to and let's see what we get and we start seeing all the buildings and the path towards that saloon with the sign Oh yeah, that is gonna be awesome. I think number one is gonna be the best. Or maybe it's gonna be number three. I'm not sure why number one has a power cable here. I think it's a bit early for that. Yeah, I love the background here, number three, number four. Look at that. We have our sign, our door, and the whole town around it with the little backgrounds, like little mountains in the background. Awesome. Cool, now that you know how to do zoom out, zoom in, panning, changing parts of the images, well, what if you had this beautiful image that you generated long ago, which is made with Midjourney like four or three, and you want to use all of those features on the, well, I got a simple solution for you. You can actually go into Midjourney, into all the images you generated. Let's say I have this wonderful one with a little uh, tree. I guess those are deals. So you can copy job ID. Then you go back to Midjourney, you do slash show and type in the ID and what you get is Midjourney goes and loads that old image and uh, it loads it but that's the old engine you will notice that there's no panning or zooming or any like anything like that in that image however when there's a need there's a way here's a neat little trick on how to get Midjourney to recognize that old image as part of the new engine you can click value region and that works on all the images. However, in this case, you don't want to actually change the image. So what you do is you select an area outside of the image and then submit. And what you get is that old image imported into Midjourney 5.2. You can do all of those cool new features on the old image. And there you have it. All four of those images are exactly the same. So we just upscale any one of those. And now we can get zoom, zoom out, panning and so on. So let's make it uh, wide. Custom zoom, 16 by nine, zoom one, submit. And what we start seeing is how Midjourney adds details around the image. It's gonna be the most beautiful with the red clouds around it and all the little details in the horizon. I hope it will add some more deal in the background, but I don't think it does. But yeah, that image is really beautiful and look how much detail was added into that and it just smoothly added that into the existing image even though it was even rendered with an old version of Midjourney, and it matches uh, the colors of the channel so that's an added bonus and for the last tip what if you have an old image that you like that had a broken face or the broken hands which is very common with older versions of Midjourney? well the same trick works perfectly well though. So I had this image of Santa that I generated for Christmas last year. And it's a cute image of Santa fixing some electronics. However, in order to make his hands a little bit less creepy, I made him wear gloves. Well, gloves no more, dear Santa. Let's fix your hands. Same thing, job ID, show and value region. And now we can, so hands using a soldering iron to fix electronics. And the interesting thing is that Midjourney actually uses Midjourney 5.2 to do in painting, even in images generated with older versions of the engine. So the hands it will generate in most cases are much better than 
the hands that were generated with older versions. And we started seeing the results. Okay, and even though in some of the images he still wears gloves, like in the original image, uh, which could be fixed with the minus minus no gloves as well. But let's check out this version. I think that version looks pretty good. Let's try to fix it again. I think that one looks pretty decent. I cannot say that it's completely fixed, but it definitely looks way better than before. It's no longer nightmare fuel, maybe distracted daydreaming fuel. And once this is ready, let's make it wider. 16 by nine, zoom one. Or maybe let's zoom out a little bit, so 1.5. We have uh, full-blown Christmas trees around. Here Santa is surrounded by Christmas trees. And here he is in his Christmas lab, fixing this tiny little PCB. And uh, you can use the same technique for faces, for hands. It does work better with uh, more recent versions of Mid Journey. It does work with version four as well, which has been out for a while. Okay, and my last bonus tip is don't forget to use the website for inspiration and to learn prompting. Mid Journey has a, a gallery where all the generations are public and you can take and copy the prompt of any of the images there. So you can learn a lot from some of those images. So you can go here to explore, take one of the images you like and just copy full command. Go back to Mid Journey, paste the command. Don't forget the imagine prompt. And if you want exactly the same image as though, make sure to use the same engine and the same seed. Well, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back to the video I shot earlier. And here we have a very similar and very cool image. I like this number three the most. It's a beautiful image. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something. Mid Journey has came a long ways in the 13 months since it was released. It's Honestly, kind of mind-blowing that it was released only 13 months ago. If you want to use Mid Journey and uh, talk to other like-minded people, be sure to join our Discord in the link below to use Mid Journey and other similar algorithms. And speaking of the algorithm, don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you won't miss any of the future digital life hacks. That's it. Until next time, see ya.